Hello, everyone. This webinar will be recorded. Dear participants, fellow colleagues, welcome to the implementation webinar of FM Online Reporting. My name is John. I am responsible for designing of the FM Reporting tool, and I will present today's webinar. Until now, we have more than 50 participants with us. I'm amazed by the number of participants at last, as last time because they may be very intensive questions today to this project. But the good thing is we also have three panelists to join us. Uh, Technology Information Unit Deputy Director Johanna Navakoska, uh, Strategy and Communication Director Loa Matello Lampolowski joined us. We are all very happy to answer any questions that may raise from this webinar. And you are welcome to type your questions in the question box. The topic today is about implementation of FM Online project. If you are interested with background or training of this project, we will guide you later with previous webinar and training video. For this project, we have made two calls with CBs, one introduction webinar, one session during CB meeting, and three pilot tests. FSC has successfully delivered a reporting tool that banishes FSC, certification bodies, and external stakeholders. The tool will be implemented from 20, 2021 onwards. FSC would like to take this opportunity to engage with stakeholders and click feedback. Let me direct you, your attention to the screen. This webinar is divided into six parts. I want to begin with Advice Note 200720, which is normative. And then I will move on to the FM Align features. Next, we will talk about modules, where I will demonstrate by an example. Then we will recap the workflow and land on the user support information and next steps. And finally, we will have 25 minutes question and answer session. I advise notes for FM Online reporting. Let's take a look on the first phase of advice notes. FSC has broken down the implementation into two phases to ensure a smooth trans transition of our CBs. By the end of the year, CBs needs to adapt operational procedure and arrange training to the use of FM Align tool. From next year, it is mandatory to use FM Align templates for all FM evaluations. You can choose any of the available languages, but it has to be implemented. In the templates, most data fields are designed according to 2007, A and B, and they are mandatory. Let's take a look at phase two. In phase two, apart from using FM templates, we also need to implement all the modules of the reporting tool, including audit creation, data validation, uploading, and public summary proofreading. Certification bodies can voluntarily implement all the modules even before 2022 as there are benefits and automations to avoid double data entry and manual translation. FM Online Features. So what are the features of FM Online? First, the solution is innovative. It's based on state-of-the-art infrastructure, including Translation API, which support 110 different languages. Microsoft uh, Azure Cloud to provide the cloud uh, service for the web application. And Microsoft Dynamics, which is the core database. So the state-of-the-art infrastructure provides a very low internet latency, also global scalability. Does not depend on where you are. Versatile. Um, we use Microsoft Word as the uh, core solution with the carrier of data, 
that provides the offline capability, which is crucial and demanded by certification bodies. And we can also use uh, review tracking, co-authoring, and sharing. User-oriented. In our templates, we have um, both mouse and keyboard entry by clicking a checklist, check checkbox, selecting from the drop-down list and the date picker. We also embedded the 22,000 pesticide and 60,000 species. And we use that as dictionary. The dictionary will ensure data consistency. Also compatible. So in our templates, CBs can um, optionally to fill in the checklist as an appendix or do not fill anything and can add tables, pictures into the rich text elements. Also, we have seamless transition. So uh, we do not request the uh, CBs to use both the old Salesforce platform and new FMLine reporting tool, because once we have data uploaded from the FMLine tool, the public search will be right directed to the new public summary page. Robust and secure. We have reinforced the data quality and the data security. We pay attention to the privacy issues. So any personal identifiable information in the audit template will not be shown in the public summary. And we also use regular experiences and uh, validations to ensure the data quality. I will demonstrate later on with an example. Global relevance. We use multi-language support. At the moment, we have nine different languages in 2020, and more will be available. And this line language covers 90% uh, of the global FAC certified area and 80% of the number of certificates. Streamlined. We have very streamlined data flow, automation, and translation. So we only need to input the data at one place. There is no need for double entry. And once we have data, this data can be shared uh, with stakeholders. And uh, also, we can provide uh, API to CBs. For example, if you want to monitor your lung conformities, and you can uh, get data directly from an API. Data standardization and access. We use standard data format to enable analytics and fetch data from previous re reports. Um, also, to have uh, aligned, consistent data that allow us to get insights and knowledge from the FSC system. FM online modules. There are many five, five. major modules. First, audit creation. So CBs can create an audit from FAC certification portal. Second, report in report in FM templates. So only the second module is mandatory from 2021 onwards. And we can fetch data. We can validate data and upload. And this is the third module. And the fourth module auto translation by translation API and proofreading. So our users don't have to prepare a separate report in a different language, but only do proofreading. And the last one, if applicable, uh, we can allow errata submission. So once a report is uploaded, um, however, we notified some typos or we found some mistake in the report, we can still submit an errata. So the auto report is not sealed. So I would like to show you with an example. Uh, before I switch to the example, to the real environment, uh, let's, let me tell you how to get started. Uh, we need to have the environment. The environment is that ensure that on your computer you have Microsoft Word 2013 or above version. And you have to install a tiny portable uh, add-in file. This Microsoft Word add-in is only two megabytes. I will show you where to get it. And uh, last, we need to have the CB admin account and the audit code, and that can be used for fetch data. Uh, the same account can log in to the FAC certification portal and uh, the work add-in. So this is the resource available. Um, you don't have to remember the HTTP link. 
uh, I can demonstrate to you how to easily find it. Let's go to fsc.org. And uh, let's navigate to integrity, and then to digital audit report. I apologize for my internet connection because when I'm making the webinar, the whole bandwidth is taken by the GoToWebinar. So now you can see we have the uh, background information, highlights, videos, resource, and FAQs. So let's first get to video. And uh, to the left, you can see there was a uh, webinar held in uh, last year. So that's the introduction webinar about the background of this project. In the middle, we can see there is a training video. This training video is uh, 46 minutes and uh, it's mandatory for CPs to participate in this training. And uh, we will also publish the webinar today here uh, at the right side. If we continue with resources, uh, you can see there are mainly four types of resources. The first one is the um, language, uh, audit report in different languages available. We have German, English, Spanish, French, Japanese, Portuguese, Russian, Ukrainian, and Chinese. Uh, you can choose any of them. And uh, in the beginning, uh, only the data in English will be available. Uh, so uh, once you upload the data or you made a pr uh, proofreading of uh, translation, uh, next time when you fetch data with another language, uh, the language, the data will be populated in this local language. And uh, the next uh, resource is the add-in file. As I told you, it's a tiny portable uh, installation file. It will take like uh, two, three seconds. Uh, you can install that. So uh, for this webinar, I have already that add-in on my computer. So I don't have to install that again. And then we have the uh, group member list template. For group members, if the total number is large, uh, larger than 20, so in case of large number group members, you don't have to type in the template, the group member list names, contact, etc. Uh, you can use an Excel template and then upload to FAC certification portal. And last, uh, we have the um, global opacity side list, and you can refer to this global opacity side where we have identified the FAC categories, whether it is prohibited, highly restricted, or restricted. Uh, also, we provided some local names, local names in uh, French, Russia, and the Chinese. So uh, let's continue um, with the modules. Once we downloaded the resource, we can uh, start to create an, uh, create an audit. So I will sign out, and uh, you can go to FAC uh, certification Microsoft CRM uh, For this webinar, I will use a QE, uh, QE environment so that that will not impact any of the real data we have. Then let's sign in uh, with the testing account, CB testing account. Let's press sign in. And let's navigate to FM certificate. From there, we can see a full list of uh, all the certificates uh, with FM or FMCOC certificate code that belongs to this testing CB. And uh, I want to point out that uh, if you, if your CB has transferred a new client from another CB, and or you create a new uh, applicant, an applicant for FM certification uh, in Salesforce, uh, that data will be synchronized within 15 minutes to this uh, portal. So we also provide filter uh, function. Uh, you can let me show you if I want to filter a name, you can type in something and uh, this name matches here. I can also type in a uh, CB uh, license code, for example, 220021. Um, okay, you can see a number of uh, city coders has this figure, have this license code. So let's select the first one as example. And uh, in the uh, upper part, you can see the certificate detail. You can change the company names. You can modify the total area, uh, type of certificate, also the validation. So uh, you can manage the certificate from here. Uh, today, we don't have to change anything of the certificate detail. And let's try to create an audit. We'll click this button, create an audit. So uh, only one uh, live, one open audit can be created. So 
once this is uh, finalized, you can create another. Otherwise, you can only stay with this one, uh, open audit. Um, I apologize again for the internet, especially when we have webinar. So um, it's ongoing. Okay, uh, first let's select the uh, report language. So this is not language you are doing audit. You can speak any language you are in audit as long as your client understand you. But this is the template that you will choose. Let's say uh, we use English as the orange language. And we also uh, need to target another translation language. So if this audit is being done in, uh, in Germany or Switzerland or Austria, uh, you can select local and say German. Uh, you can select from drop the list or type. And then let's select the uh, uh, audit type. Uh, maybe I will select civilians and select whether it's on site or remote. And then let's identify the start date. Uh, for the webinar purpose, I will identify date in the past so that later on we can upload data. And uh, so we start um, on third and finish on fourth. A total area we cannot modify here. We can only modify in the certificate details. And here we can also uh, identify a, a reception, the email reception. It can be auditor, can be coordinator, or be uh, the certificate itself. I can add more by using a comma. So uh, I will type using a private email to test this function. Let's click Submit. And uh, after a few seconds, this audit is created successfully and is redirecting to audit list page. And now you can see um, the translate button and the public summary button is not applicable because we don't have data yet. Um, then let's move back to uh, the email account to see whether we can get that uh, notification message. Very well, it's here. So let's open it up. See uh, the uh, fundamental, the basic information of the certificate. Also about the audit details is shown here. And this notification message uh, will be sent to you if um, the audit report is not uploaded in time. So we have successfully cl uh, collected the, uh, created the audit. And the next step is to uh, fetch data. So uh, instead of using the blank template, I will use a template uh, that I have filled some data so that later on we can upload data. Uh, Otherwise, the data validation does not allow to upload data with an empty template. Uh, the Microsoft Word is opening. And uh, from the home ribbon, you can see on the right side, there is a FM audit add-in display. So I can click on that, and uh, the side panel will be displayed over here. And you can see, now we have a almost tem empty template. I will type in the uh, CB code. Uh, this CB code is not a kind of uh, account. It's a public code that we shared across one particular CB. Uh, I think I didn't correct the right uh, frame. So let's click or press enter. And we can see the audit we have created is shown over here. And let's try fetch data. Select this audit and fetch data. There is a warning window tell you if you want uh, fetch data, then uh, some data overlaps, the data fetching will be overwritten. So let's click yes. The fetch data operation is in progress. It's a bit slow because um, the webinar will take the bandwidth, but let's be patient. Hopefully it's working. While it's fetching data, maybe I can show you something else. Um, let's go back to the page. So um, um, once we upload data, the public search of this particular certificate will be right directed to a page like this one. Um, I will show you. So there's a um, public summary page. Ah, finally, the data fetch is successful. So let me write up regarding what I told you. So the public search will be right directed from here. So you don't, the, the same, the more information will be available. For example, the uh, details of the certificate, out of the tree species, species information. And you can also navigate down to the uh, bottom to see the audit details regarding non-conformities. So the data fetch is successful. 
and you can see um, the company names, uh, the address are there. Uh, we can still add some more information. For example, I will just type uh, date of report to today. Today we wrote report. And I will leave the certificate body information blank and let's navigate down. Uh, there is one function I want to show you regarding the, uh, we will use uh, one single template for all type of certifications, uh, all type of evaluations. For example, this is surveillance. However, when I change into a main evaluation, and immediately the page from 19 pages will move to, you see, uh, 26 pages. So uh, when you have different type of uh, evaluation, the relevant part, irrelevant part will be hidden. And it works the same for the type of certificate. If you choose group certificate or single certificate, uh, then uh, for single certificate, the group part is hidden. Uh, it works also uh, similarly like uh, for the ecosystem service. So if you check this ecosystem service in the scope, you can see the annex B is popping up here. When we uncheck it, annex B is gone. And then let me show you a, a real-time validation. So if you option this one, show validation in message for uh, on focus out. And when we try to select a, uh, for example, a tropical forest in this country, which is uh, Lithuania, and then we will get immediately an error message because this country in, in Lithuania, there is no tropical forest. So to make the validation work, let's change it back to temperate. Um, you can also opt this out because it can be quite annoying while you're trying to uh, edit data and uh, the consistency checked all the time and uh, maybe so useful uh, before the finalization of the report. Uh, we can move on to the species section. Uh, you can type or select from the drop down. And uh, if you type something, however, when you didn't type it correctly, uh, I will choose an example, for example, PCRBS. Without S, it's not PCRBS. When you move out, you can see there's a red wave beneath that. So uh, you can use the dictionary, right click and auto correction. And now this is the correct uh, species, PCRBS. We use underscore instead of a space. Uh, for uh, the dictionary to work. And you can add multiple uh, sections by click this plus button uh, in case there are multiple species. And uh, this is also similar for um, for the pesticide. I want to show you, for example, um, the glyphosate is in black because it's, there is not a prohibition or restriction. But if you change to a restricted species, for example, 24D, and you can see the color of the font actually change to blue because 24D um, is the uh, restricted uh, pesticide for FSC. And if you choose another one, and you can see it's violet, so this is highly restricted. While we try to type something which is prohibited, and it will become red, I will show you. So let's type, uh, for example, alacolor. And you can see alacolor is prohibited and then it's red. So this is a kind of warning to help users to identify uh, this, the pesticide used by a certificate holder. Uh, actually, it's, uh, there is belongs to a category FSC, and uh, we can pay attention to sometimes there is a need for derogation, or there is a need for um, for for the environment and social risk assessment. And you can finish all the the relevant parts for FMUs, uh, for the uh, for the SGCVs, and for the FMU, we need to pay attention to the uh, centroid. So the centroid has to be um, in the WGS decimal place. Uh, if I type something, uh, I will option the validation on. And if I type something not correctly, and there is an error. And if I type something out of the box, if I say 500, it will tell you for this country, it's not possible to get a 500 as longitude. So let's stay with the original one. Let's say 42.40. And it is valid. So we can uh, finish this uh, template and uh, try to validate. I will try to validate for now. It says validation operation in progress. For the validation, uh, the API is calling the pesticide category in the cloud. 
very unfortunately, there is an error code. I think it's because of the internet. So let's try to log in and to see whether we can upload data and hope that works. So I will use the same testing account. Sunny. And you can see welcome CIT test. And let's try to run the validation. And uh, you can see there are some. Um, so the first error is that because I entered PCIBs in two places. Second one is that the audit itinerary. Actually, we we have start date of third and fourth, but we have a second day. Let's fix these errors and run run validation again. So first of all, we got in three species. Let's select another one. Go to three species and change it to another one. And we fix the audit itinerary. It's over here. Let's change it to another date within the audit itinerary planner date. Let's say October the 3rd. And let's validate again. Okay, validation is successful. Immediately, you can see the upload data is enabled. Before validation, we cannot upload data. So when we try to upload, um, it internally follow up another up, uh, validation process and tell you once the upload data is finished and this template will be locked. So we, it will be read only mode. Let's click yes. It makes sense because once data is uploaded, if we change something over here, then the data from the template will differ from the certification portal. Uh, there where we have the um, inconsistency. So once data is uploaded and the template will be read only. So the upload data operation is in progress. Very well, all the data successfully uploaded thanks to the internet. And now we need to go back and chain, see, see, uh, check whether the data is there in certification portal. And you can see once uploaded, there is a message saying the document is read only and all status is closed. Let's go back to the certification portal and refresh the page. We go to the top and uh, find the FM search coder. And let's go to this particular, and you can see the audit translation and the uh, uh, view is available. So we can change some information. For example, uh, the uh, origin language is English, and this one we can change the local name. Uh, you can change it. Let's test something. For example, I will change this name to a local name. And let's press save at the bottom. So this is the proofreading part. We don't have to translate everything, only the uh, text text, text viewed. And let's view the public summary report. So let's click on the folder. And you can see what I did, the proofreading, the local name is shown there. Um, you can also navigate down to the certificate details to see the species. Also, you can select the audit. There are a number of different audits available. And you can select this one or the previous audit and check the audit details. And this public summary will be uh, available to the general public. And uh, with that, we are, um, I have showed you the whole life cycle of the um, reporting process. And let's recap the FMLI workflow. So first of all, if there's a new client, you have to create a new client in the Salesforce and the data will be synchronized. Select the client and then set them audit, uh, including basic information that is uh, I showed you. And then by pressing a CB code, we can populate uh, the data. But of course, uh, in the phase one, 
we can uh, opt not to use uh, data uh, population, uh, data fetching and validation. We can simply start with an empty template, which is also fine. But in other case, we cannot upload data later on. So they will, after you have filled data in the template, uh, you will go in through an iterative process of data validation, also the review within the CP. And until uh, the data, uh, report is finalized and the data validation passed, and we can upload data to the FSC CRM. And that has to be done in 90 days. Um, once data is uploaded, we can use the translation API to make translation, and public summary report is automatically created. Um, so in terms of audit report itself, that can stay with the audit uh, with the Microsoft Word, and that can be uh, saved uh, uh, at the CB side, also shared with your uh, audit client, uh, which is the certificate. And uh, in terms of phase one, if you do not use the other modules, only use the uh, report template, you have to create a public summary manually. So basically copy the public part of the report to a separate document and then upload to Salesforce. So that it has to be done manually, auto translation has to be done manually. And in terms of phase two, the whole uh, picture, the whole workflow will be mandatory from 2022 onwards. So let's move on with user support and next phases. We provided a, uh, an email address, auditreport at fsc.org. You can contact auditreport at fsc.org. Um, for if you want to have a testing user account, if you want to have a CB code, when there's technical issues, or do you want to provide a feedback, also uh, tell us about your user experience so that we can further improve, you're welcome to contact us. And uh, this is the landing page I have showed you. You don't have to remember, just go to integrity to digital audit report. And the last, this the certification port will be implemented uh, from 2022 onwards. Um, so regarding next phases, it is required that the CBs to implement uh, the templates and give feedback to FSE. So uh, we have now the version 1.0 uh, as a solution, but every software uh, will have lifespan that in, uh, repeatedly to upgrade to the next version. So we are happy to collect feedbacks, then uh, bring all these improvement needs into our version 2.0. Um, of course, we do that periodically, not every three days, maybe after every few months. Also, uh, uh, we are welcome CBs to have testing of data, uh, but uh, maybe I can invite Joanna to give some comments about this part. Thank you very much, John. I hope you can all hear me well. We are very glad yes. that you participate in this webinar. And indeed, as Sean presented very well at the beginning, uh, the advice notes uh, envisages two-stage implementation of FM online solution. And over 2021, we do not yet require certification bodies to upload data through the template. However, our infrastructure, uh, infrastructure will be ready. And therefore, uh, all of you who would like to voluntarily apply data upload functions, we invite you to collaborate closely with us uh, and use this opportunity as testing. For us, it will be like in any case when you are engaging a great learning process and we could support you in this uh, first exercises with data upload and uh, gather your feedback and then um, collect this feedback for eventual future system improvements. So we will be very grateful if uh, those of you who are interested, who are interested in this um, supported um, uh, upload of data, approach us at the email address that is presented on the screen, on the slide, and we can then arrange with you uh, relevant support for this second part, still voluntarily in 2021 uh, of FM Online. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joanna. And then that brought us to the end of the presentation, and we can start question and answer session immediately. But uh, before that, uh, maybe I can post you a question. So uh, I will uh, draw up a poll on the screen. You can see. Um, so I would like to ask your opinion about this project. So uh, what do you think this uh, FLM project needs solution? Whether it's a good solution or a bad solution, you can click on the screen so that uh, I will also share the, uh, the result with all the participants. Um, I will give 30 seconds.
amazing. We have 93 participants, and uh, the vote is still ongoing. I think approximately let's close this poll and see the result. So let me share. Very well, we have 65% of the participants is very supportive, said it's a good solution with useful functions. And the 26 is neutral, and we still have 9% uh, not satisfied. Um, but it's great that uh, we are, have support from city voters, and uh, this is the biggest motivation that we want to have a good product, a good solution, but which benefits everyone. So uh, with that, let's move on to the uh, question and answer session. So I think we have a few questions, and uh, I will invite Joanna to moderate the question. You uh, can read the question and uh, identify who would answer the question. Thank you very much, Sean. So when I was observing the question box over the webinar, it's clear that most of them will be for you. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you, you just be prepared for that. And I can also see in advance that we will not be able likely to answer all of them. Uh, so we uh, we commit, of course, to participants that if we don't manage to answer all the questions during the session, we will send you responses later. There is also one question um, stating that the, the person who was asking this question was stating that uh, they have many more questions about nearly every item that was presented during webinar and they was concerned whether we will be able to answer those questions. If there is uh, support and need from certification bodies for more sessions, Q&A sessions on FM online solution, we will be organizing them. So um, uh, please do uh, indicate uh, your need uh, uh, contacting us through approaching you to receive this forum uh, with uh, announcement of any further Q&A sessions uh, on FM Online. So let's start with the first one. Uh, first session, going forward, in the Brazilian Amazon, we have many different species with different common names that are explored. What should auditors do when there is no particular species, scientific and common names in the FST database? This is a very good question. So. Uh... Uh, current practice for Salesforce, I, I can see that every um, quarter there is a new data entry for species. But for our solution, we actually made a lot of efforts. You can see there are 60,000 tree species uh, globally. And uh, I guess you will not invent new species unless you are really a plant scientist. And uh, we are using a very uh, one common nomenclature. So in this uh, master tree species list, 60,000, there's no duplication. There's no subspecies, there's no variety, no hybrid, no clone. So only species. And if you want to indicate a plantage, for example, it's hybrid species, you can put in a remark part. But I very, I'm very confident regarding the three species. We have 60,000 globally, and only 5,000 of them is commercially available. So uh, trust on the data dictionary. So I'm sure that you will find the correct uh, species name in our data dictionary. And, uh, and if you came across any difficulties, uh, as Sean was also presenting, uh, we will be providing resources to support users. Uh, so, so simply contact us in case of doubts. And in terms of hybrids, uh, if you operate with plantations that are using hybrids, uh, just choose the, the one of the species that are that is present in this hybrid. And then, as Sean suggested, uh, include the remark that this was a hybrid. And question number two. Uh, will FST provide a public API integration with other systems or an option for data export? So we can yes, join uh, the answer, Sean. <laughs> Please go ahead. Okay, I, we, I think I mentioned that before. So uh, API normally is not public. So we provide credentials to CB and you will have a connection to all the data you have for your CB. So for example, if you have some other system and you can simply synchronize the company names, the long conformities, if you want to monitor that, and we provide API to you. And this synchronization nowadays, you, there's not much coding to do and you just play with the uh, some tool. So that the that can enable you to synchronize data from the system. So that will ensure that your auditor will not, or your coordinator don't have to uh, make data entry in two uh, separate systems. Uh, and of course, that uh, that requires integration of schemas. So um, the data structure would have to be consistent. 
Um, uh, yes, uh, so, the schema, you can, yes. Uh, even the two schema is not the same, uh, you can still do the mapping. So in case you have a different uh, drop-down list, uh, you can do data mapping from our system to your system. Yes, but but it yeah. has to be done. Yeah, so so yeah. it's uh, not just just purely API. Um, question number three: As CB, we are interested in using the data from the audits as well as as FST will do. For this, we have developed our own online reporting system. My doubts are: First, is it possible for us to extract data from the FST report in addition to the FST itself? And the continuation to the question, is it possible to feed the report fields from an Excel file or another database instead of filling in the word itself? So maybe I will start with first part, part of this question. Is it possible for us to extract data from FST report in addition to, to FST doing so? At the moment, we did not envisage such functionality, but we will be building analytics based on the data that we will be receiving from FM Online. and. Um, we will be designing them over 2021 while uh, certification bodies are implementing the template. Um, the data is as such available for, for you uh, in the template. So of course, if you would have infrastructure that allows you to extract them, you can use them. FSC doesn't object to that uh, at all. In terms of using our analytics, that would be rather, um, that would be something that we would have to uh, consider and, uh, and assess only over next year. Uh, and maybe, Sean, you can cover the, the second part of the question, uh, whether it is possible to feed the report from an um, Excel file or another database instead of filling in the word itself. Yes, um, in terms of technology, you can uh, fill data. I mean, there are different uh, interfaces. You can fill in the data different format, like JSON file, Excel file, it's, it's fine. But still, uh, in terms of cost, I don't think it's worth it because in for FM reports we have 30 entities, we have very complicated relationship, especially it is very brain burning regarding the multi-language support. That really takes a lot of time to figure out how to make it. And uh, for the difficulties itself, I do not recommend you do anything else from our report template. But technically, yes, you can do any kind of data exchange. Thank you, Sean. Uh, question number four: Where is the list of uh, 60,000 species? Uh, from only 2,709 species are currently available on the FST database. Will all 60,000 species be made available to choose on the FST database? I think we covered that, but you can reiterate perhaps because that's quite a recurring topic. Yes, the question regarding the source. So we have the species also pesticide. Basically, we use the, the technology in the, in the IT we call it Scrappy. So we use different uh, sources of information. Uh, there are ITTO, for example, the other plantation database. We, we query this data and then try to re re remove the duplicate and find the common nomenclature. That's how we get the list of species. Thank you, Sean. And the next question is, is there any particular reason why all older versions of Word cannot be used? Um, so uh, actually, uh, there is just uh, one, uh, we call it the repeated section that is supported from uh, 2013 onwards. And, uh, and we also noticed that uh, 2013, actually seven years ago, and most uh, certification bodies have the uh, updated version. And uh, for 2013, uh, 20, we also have free version. So it's recommended to install the, the latest version for free. Thank you. And the next one is relevant to um, non-conformities from a previous audit, uh, whether uh, open non-conformities from a previous audit appear automatically in the report model to be closed in the cor current audit. Um, so the audit, uh, the, the non conformance from previous audit will be uh, appearing automatically in the current report, yes. And you can choose to open or close in your current audit. Uh, in case, uh, as I showed you the summit errata, uh, you want to close a non-conformity after an audit or in between two audits. Um, it is still possible to use the uh, submit errata function to close the non-conformities. Thank you, Sean. Uh, the FM reports need to be in local languages. How will this be translated to languages not mentioned so far, such as Slovenian, Croatian, Slovak, Finnish? Uh, um, the report, we have nine different languages, but the translation, as I mentioned to you, we have 110 different languages. And uh, definitely, I guess, 
110 could cover all of our FM certificates. And uh, the only question is that uh, we need to integrate the translation of labels because from the line languages, we have uh, the uh, proofreading by our network partners. We're sure uh, that this translation is correct. But if you purely use uh, machine translation for the uh, out of the nine languages, there may be something slightly uh, not correct. And uh, that will, so we will do by step step to include more languages. But now already we can do the translation that is already available to all the different kind of languages. For example, Slovenian, Croatian, Slovak, and Finnish, they are all supported. However, as you probably all well known in terms of machine translation in such uh, in the terminology that uh, uh, certification in using the result is, is really doubtful. So as Sean said about those um, confirmed ones, we have translated that, we have reviewed them with the relevant experts and we will be providing more languages step by step, uh, choosing based on the number of audits uh, that is being done in certain country. But you still have English uh, version available for, for those for which you don't feel comfortable with with using machine translation. The next question: What about on PA or MA? The certificate holder won't be on the uh, won't be on the FST database. Uh, I guess this question is related with Salesforce, right? So. Uh... <clears throat> I think for FSC database, we can say that uh, there is an older database, also new database, which is Dynamics. And uh, when you, um, when in terms of pre-validation, actually you can have that. You, you can uh, use uh, we, uh, the. I think we have drop-down list for surveillance main validation, but the pre-validation also include. You can use uh, the templates for pre-validation that can be shown in into our certification portal. Thank you. And the next one, will there be a separate login for each auditor? No, for auditors, um, there is a, a common code that's shared across the CB. But of course, if the audit has the admin function, you, you have to upload data or you create audit, uh, you can have credential. But the credentials is normally designed for the reviewers or for coordinators who will uh, create an audit and upload data. And the auditor uh, usually will be working with the template and, and for most of the time, as we assume it, uh, it will be happening uh, offline and this upload function fetching would, uh, would then be preferably done uh, from the office, for example. Um, how to define dates for audits that occur in more than one period of time? Uh... For the moment, we have not considered that. So uh, if you have... Uh non-consecutive audit dates. I think what we do is just uh, um, define the very early starting date and the very end uh, audit end date. And in audit itinerary, just figure out uh, which days you have you did audit, but we will skip the days, uh, which is not really a, you did the audit. So that's how we solve it. But uh, I think if you have very large across, larger gap of two different non-consecutive audit dates, um, that we also, your problem regarding long conformity. So if you raise long conformity, which date should you define the due date? Is it previous audit date or second audit date? So, but I told you the audit solution. So we skip the dates without audit date, uh, without really audit. Thank you, Sean. And the next question is connected to the first one about species and concerns about lack of, uh, lack of uh, species typical for Brazil uh, in the list. I will read it, but uh, I consider this answer. Species from the Brazilian Amazon, a separate spreadsheet should be made available, such as that of group members. It will be a lot of work to fill in the template. It is common to have more than 30 species in a forest uh, management operation, or perhaps Sean, you would like to add anything uh, to that in terms of amount of, of species that may occur. Mm, yeah, I think the question is more about the whether we can make it available. So, uh, you know, the dictionary is embedded in the Microsoft Word. And if you're smart enough, you can open the dictionary and you can see all the uh, uh, the, the tree species list. But uh, actually, the, the difficult one is that what species belongs to the Brazilian Amazon? Uh, that part, we haven't done that. We don't know what other species available. But of course, if you provide list to us, we can make uh, some uh, comparison and told you which uh, name is correct in our dictionary. So, uh, yeah, that's the answer. Thank you, Sean. And next one, next question, I think is a bit broken, and uh, I will 
search in a minute who is uh, who has asked them or maybe i will ask this person to to type some clarification uh, environmental and social risk assessment assessments needed for everything from and then the question mark which surely uh, so i think it was from somebody from soil association if i am not mistaken so if if one of you could uh, just elaborate on this question and we can get back to it a bit later uh, moving to the next one, if different pesticides applied um, uh, are applied the same year uh, on different areas, uh, looks as it only one that there is only one entry allowed. No, there are multiple so entries. You can, yeah. I think uh, I showed that there is a plus button. We can click uh, on multiple sections that we uh, it allows different type of pesticide to be added. So in the, in the demo, I showed the two pesticides. Um, surely the basic information such as species will only be completed once? Absolutely. So uh, unless you add new species to your next audit, so all the information you filled once and next audit just click fetch data, all the species list will be available in the database. You just complete once, no, no, not a second time, unless you reduce, uh, delete some species or add some species. Uh, what do we do when there are problems with the template? For example, glyphosate is restricted and even non-listed pesticides need an environmental and social risk assessment. Uh, I'm not sure the problem was that in terms of technical support, you can contact us, but the glyphosate is not restricted. I think in our template it's used black. So uh, definitely I recommend mm -hmm. you come back to us in case you have really a problem with the glyphosate. But okay, I didn't say I that. Think uh, that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that there is some clarification maybe to the previous questions from Robert. FS, FST pesticides policy 3.0 needs an environmental social risk assessment for all pesticides from uh, 1st January this year. So it is not applicable, yes or no, it will be a constant requirement. Uh, I'm not so sure with the policy, but I understand that only the prohibited and the highly restricted, you need the ESRA, not for all the pesticides. So uh, we need to look into the normative document itself, but uh, it's mm -hmm. not. We will, we will check that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is um, is the FS, is FST still insist that all pesticides usage has to be expressed in kilograms only, or the liters are allowed now? No, uh, actually. Uh, we get this feedback from last CB meeting and we implemented the change immediately. Now we have liters and uh, kilograms. Uh, we may add some more like gallons uh, for the US uh, in the future. So it's not uh, limited in, in the weight. You can also have that in the volumes. Mm, thank you. How many accounts to assess to access the report to generate all, uh, will each CB get? As many as you need. But as I said, the, the auditors, they don't need the account. They just need the common uh, auditor code across the CB. And yes, of course, FST will have to also consider, consider that uh, in terms of uh, well capacity, infrastructural capacity, eventual costs, etc. So uh, we are happy to receive your request and you, then we will evaluate them based on, on needs, recognition of those needs across the whole CB community. Uh, is it possible for the certification body to extract data from the report in addition to FST? That's repetition from uh, from the previous questions. As we said before, um, uh, this is in principle, we, we don't um, restrict that for you. You can, of course, uh, extract this data uh, with available tools. And in terms of our analytics, to which extent we would be sharing them with certification bodies or ASI, that is to be determined. Um, um, in the period when we'll be actually building um, those analytics uh, over 2021. Um, I have many questions, yes. This is the question that I mentioned at the beginning about about many more questions. So I will, uh, I think I already addressed that. Uh, so when we manage our majors and preconditions, do we need to make another report and upload? No, that answer, you can use submit errata to, to uh, close the non-conformity or preconditions. Uh, why 90 days deadline of the entire cycle has to be obligatory for main assessment? Um, so the fact is that uh, uh, there is a requirement uh, for 90 days. So uh, for a main evaluation report, um, you have to submit the data even there are open non-conformity, even the certificate is not issued. So you can say uh, 
it's new applicant, but we need to have the data. And later on, you can close this long conforming the issuer certificate. So the first data available should be within 90 days for transparency. And later on, you can use the submitted router function to close this long conformity and issue the certificate. Thank you. Um, will the report be possible to use on computers only, or are tablets with Word installed a possible solution? Okay, this is uh, very interesting. So, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, if you want this add-in to work, we need to have Microsoft Word 2013 uh, onwards. Um, but if you somebody you say, okay, I don't want to use Word, which is also fine. As I showed you, there is a translation page from left to right. You can manually type in all the information in the web form, but of course, uh, uh, you have to stay with the internet connection. And uh, it's difficult for you to uh, maybe today you feel something, tomorrow you feel something, and also difficult for reviewers to see what has been changed uh, after one review. So we can uh, basically the micro word software word solution is much more difficult, um, and uh, it's so much easier to define an online form. But if you want to use online form, we can use this translation page automatically. You enter data from there. Thank you, Sean. And uh, we are approaching the end of the webinar, but I would like to still cover at least two questions. Sure. Please explain how about technical review and certification decision in CBs are to be managed in the online system? Will each auditor be able to access the online system and the draft report can be accessible for the reviewers of the CB throughout the system? How about the peer review process? Um, as I said, why do we use Microsoft Word? So it's a carrier for data, and all your reviews will remain in the Microsoft Word. There's a track review chain uh, version. You can add the comments in the Microsoft Word template. But this one, the Word itself, FAC does not consume. We consume the data with the finalized report. So if uh, you can um, use share reports in whatever system you have, you can have the SAP, you can have uh, maybe the Word online itself, or you can just simply send emails by attachment with the word. And you send that to peer reviewer, peer review, reply to you with the comments within the word, and you reply to him. So that's how the process is ongoing. But for our system, we will take only the finalized report. Thank you. Uh, the implementation deadline isn't clear. The advice note says that certification bodies shall use the template starting January 1st in three months, but it's being discussed in this webinar that there will be that there will still be user testing and changes to the template throughout 2021. Is 2021 going to be a transition year where we can use either the new template or existing templates? No, uh, for the second part of the question. So as advice note says, the template is mandatory since 1st January 2021. What we want to test with you, we call it testing, but actually it's voluntary, it's the option that you will anyway have is just upload of the data. So we want, we invite you to work closely with us while uh, doing voluntarily the, the second part that advice note is addressing and making mandatory only uh, starting from 1st January 2022. However, the template will be mandatory in three months. That's correct. And there is no allowance to use other templates. Um, there is another issue with species, and that is synonyma. Each country or region may prefer other name for the same species. Also, different species name are used by different purchases industries. For example, Larix Lepto Play, uh, Larix Lepto Lepis, Larix Japonica, etc. Also, interspecies clones such as Populus alba, uh, Grandi Dentana. Uh, it is not either of those two species. How should they be named? Uh, there are hundreds of new clones every year, currently uh, some 3,000 in production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me go to the hybrid first. So in terms of hybrid clone, normally we put only the uh, modular name there and uh, mark, remark the uh, partner, uh, partner name in the uh, comment box of the uh, species information. Because as I said, we can only use a common nomenclature. And second thing that regarding the synonym, this is uh, something uh, we can do in the future. So at the moment, we have 60,000 tree species based on common nomenclature. Um, then in the future, we can develop a separate uh, data field called synonyms. So all the synonyms, we, we still have it there, but uh, we will only use the, the most common use, the, the, the data dictionary as a dictionary, so that this is the, the way how do we solve the data consistency. There has to be one single index that includes a number of different synonyms. But for data consistency and quality, we have to choose one. So uh, 
that's definitely something we can do in the future. And uh, uh, while I'm Googling in Wiki, um, the normally we use search is synonym and it pops us actually with the, uh, the most common names. So uh, that's a very good question. We'll work on it in the future. Uh, thank you, Sean, and thanks for the question. We we are at the time of the closure of this webinar, but considering that there are only, at the moment at least, few questions left, uh, we will try to address them and we will close the, at five after or so. Uh, so those of you who, who can, please stay uh, a little bit longer with us. I'm not sure if I understood that part about who has credential to use the report. In our case, each lead auditor is responsible to complete the report and submit it for review. Uh, do I understand uh, that um, this would not be possible anymore and submission would have to be done by other admin person? Um, I mean, every auditor can submit the report, of course, but uh, uh, as said before, uh, only a approved report, only finalized the report. So normally it's not the auditor who approves the report, right? It has to be a reviewer or decision maker to approve the report. And once this report is approved, uh, you can uh, upload by this person approved or by the coordinator, or you give credential to the auditor saying this report is approved and upload this from this report. So uh, I don't feel there's a need for every auditor to upload the report in terms, uh, especially, particularly in terms of administration issues. Mm, I think that the question was targeted for review. So you could do it as you do it today. So auditor can submit the template that has been filled in by auditor with data for the review, the certification body using your traditional communication channels. And then after review is done, uh, somebody responsible with CB would be uploading the data eventually as a last step to, to FSC. Um, not uh, now, there is auditor writing a report submitting to a CB where it is reviewed, then uploaded to FST database. How this process will be done? How and when will certification body review the report? So I think it's it's similar question. Sean, would you like to add anything? Would you like to recap the whole process perhaps? Uh, the one I didn't show is about uh, uh, the review change at the comments in the, within the word template. Actually, that document, as I said before, it can be saved any system, uh, also by email. Uh, that, that's the function within Microsoft Word. So you do as you do uh, did in, in the past. Um, but uh, for, for our solution, it's just about to get data from the Word adding uh, to FSC uh, Dynamics CRM. So uh, the, the review function remains in Word and you can do whatever you do uh, did in the past. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Could we attach list of every certified site? Because in Chile, for Chilean, for Chilean stakeholders, it is very important to see that the management unit lists and the list of every site that are part of this FMU. Um, we define that FMU or RMU itself is a site. So it, FM certification is not COC. I mean, normally you do not really identify sites. You identify the group members or identify the FMU. It has to be either one with. So unless we are misunderstood, because for COC it's quite normal. You have a site, and the site can be a warehouse or can be a workshop. But for first for, for, for management evaluations, there's no such really a site, but we call them MUs, RMUs, and the group members. Um, when the API integration or data download will be available? Um, actually, uh, it's like already available because when I type a URL for API, I can see the data from Dynamics. It's already available. It's just about to define the roles of each CB. Uh, if you have a system and you have the need, you should, should talk to us and we'll grant you an API uh, with a credential that uh, you have all data available to your own uh, CB. Okay, and uh, there is question about QAN, uh, QAA from this uh, webinar. Uh, so uh, we will uh, make our best to publish the written responses. They will be probably shorter than the responses that you could hear in this webinar and the recording, of course, will be made available for you as well. Uh, there is also a question about chain of custody, online report templates. We plan to start the next year. In 2021, uh, we would like to uh, already develop the form uh, which of course will uh, will depend on capacity and uh, and the progress with certification portal in terms of how far will we get uh, at the end. Um, now our time is over. There are still some last questions coming up. Um, is that if there is any mistake or correction needed, 
we have to contact the support to be able to upload the report again. Uh, I recommend the uh, question maker to uh, go through the full training video, which is available in the digital audit report. There, there is the errata submission function. So uh, in case there is a typo or mistake, you can click submit errata and only correct these uh, uh, mistakes in the track changing mode. Okay, so are they ready to use templates of the reports available already, or are you planning some modifications before 1st January 2021? I think for us, we don't really plan major changes, but uh, the change regarding the improvement of user experience or debugging, if there is a bug, we have to fix it. But unless there is the fundamental change of the uh, normative framework, for example, there's a revision of 27A, uh, no, 2007 itself, then we will change it, uh, the template or the data, the structure, etc. But uh, I don't think we'll make really fundamental modifications and that will impact mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the training, etc. So that won't happen, I guess. We, we need to double check the, the environmental social risk assessment factor and there was clarification of our webinar that uh, indeed policy requires that from 2021 or onwards. But as Sean said, unless there are changes to normative documents or just simply a solution doesn't work technically, we don't plan make, uh, making any changes. So you can definitely start getting familiarizing uh, with the template. And there is, uh, um, I would like to close webinar, but since we were covering additional questions, let's give this one also a chance. So there is follow up on, on Chile. Uh, there may be one FMU, but 5,000 large sites average 2,000 hectares. So compartments, how can they be put to report? So I think it was question related to sampling sites uh, while um, uh, investigating or evaluating FMU. Yeah, I, I don't think it will capture because here you call the site and China is called the compartment and sub compartment. I mean, maybe another country is called different, but uh, we define MU, that is the uh, bunch of forest area, have a clear objective. Um, so it, you don't have an objective for each site, right? You don't have a forest management plan for each site. So that site, you can have some description, you can have attached uh, additional table in our report template, but in our data structure, we capture the uh, MU. MU level information. So we, we basically aggregate all the area into one MU or a number of different IMUs. Okay, thank you, Sean. And uh, I think I will cover last question with thanks and we will not be taking any more. Uh, we are already over the time. Um, we have seen how the system technically work with proofreading and spelling, but is there already any template? So, so the, the answer is yes, there is already a template. And how will the local standards reflected in the checklist? This is actually something that I would encourage you to follow us on, on LinkedIn, on in the podcast series, because soon, somewhere probably in November, we will be publishing a podcast uh, informing you about our projects for database of standards, which Marcelo will be leading the same like uh, like other work on FM online. Um, and uh, this project will, uh, in this project, we want to address the possibility of providing automatic checklist or downloading the checklist from national standards. At the moment, uh, this functionality does not exist. Uh, so with this, considering the time, we want to thank you so much for participation. And most of all, uh, thank you to Sean and congratulations for his great work. Uh, Sean will be uh, leaving us for longer leave, happy one. Uh, and we will be having him back only in August next year. During this time, Marcelo will be providing you with support. Uh, so thank you a lot, uh, Sean, for, for getting FM online to this stage. All the best for your leave, uh, and thank you to participants for your attention. Yes, thank you, Joanna. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you very much. We will be closing the webinar now and contacting you with the materials following it. Thank you. Bye-bye.